Hey guys, it's Peyton and today I'm going to be talking about the books that I read in December. I read seven books in December. Eight if you want to count the book that I beta read for my friend Brittany. Yeah, I did a lot better than last month when I only read three books. I said I was going to do better. I told y'all to come back next month and find out and see if I did it and I did do it. I'm pretty proud of myself because a lot of these books were thicker and I read them physically. I did have some audiobooks in there but like the thicker ones I read them physically and I was flying through them. I finished my last week of my semester of college in the first week of December so the rest of the month I was just flying through books because I have missed reading so much and I'm still so excited to keep reading but oh my gosh in two weeks I'm starting another semester. So oh no, I am mad. Do not do this to me. But okay, I'm gonna enjoy the moment as long as I can. So let's go ahead and talk about the books that I enjoyed. The first book that I read in December was actually a book I just randomly got on audiobook. I guess I clicked it on my library on a hold and I just randomly, it appeared on my phone. And I was like, okay, I'll give it a try. Let's see if I can get this read before it expires. And I zoomed through it. It's Mexican Gothic by Sylvia Moreno Garcia, I believe. I still got a sticker because I actually listened to the book. I didn't even own it. And then I went to a used bookstore later on in the month and I found the book for $10. And this book has been super expensive because it is an adult book and I've wanted it like for a while now. It would have been the perfect thing to read in October because it has a bit of a spooky vibe. But when I found it for $10 hardcover, I knew this was never going to happen again. So I got the book. I really enjoyed it and I gave it a four out of five stars. It's definitely one of those books I can see myself rereading, especially in October times. That's why I made sure to snatch it up. I actually freaking have a ripped copy. I didn't notice this until after I got it. So I'm just gonna tape that. <laughs> This book really reminds me of The Haunting of Hill House because it's all about a spooky house. And the main character, her cousin, is in the house. She married into the family that has been living here for a while. And it's 1950s Mexico. So it's back in the day. All she knows is her cousin has just been really sick. And they're saying she like got tuberculosis and that she's having mental issues. And just saying she is having all these problems ever since she's gotten in this house and she has sent letters to the main character and like her family saying like hey this house is doing terrible things to me like I need to get out of here so the main character is going to go check on her go to the house see what's going on the house is filled with a lot of weirdos it's this family the husband of her cousin is low-key really creepy and scary and just everybody in this house is bad vibes the house is bad vibes something weird is going on I just flew through it because I just really wanted to know like the secret of the house and I'm hoping that when I reread it it'll still be a satisfying read. I won't be able to be shocked anymore because I do know what happens now so I'm hoping it's not one of those books that once you know what it is that when you reread it it's just not nearly as fun. I really enjoyed it though. I just loved the creepy vibe. I wasn't really obsessed with any of the characters. I guess I like the main character. I think I was just really here for the story so I don't think this is really a character based book which normally is my thing but I was just really mysterious what I was really freaking confused and I just wanted to know the mystery so I think that's why I enjoy this book so much the character work might not be the strongest so that's probably why I gave it a four stars there like it was a little bit of a romance aspect and I wasn't even here for that like I didn't even think it was even necessary so the next book I read will be super random to all of you probably. It is an audiobook and yes, it is a Star Wars book. So it is Master and Apprentice by Claudia Gray. I picked this up randomly. I randomly binged both seasons of The Mandalorian that are out. So I'm in a huge Star Wars mood. I've always liked Star Wars. I've never really talked about how I like Star Wars because I don't feel like I was one of those like extreme fans that needed to say they were a fan. I grew up on it. I grew up watching the movies. Now I'm really freaking into it. I love me some Baby Yoda. Like that is all that freaking matters to me right now. <laughs> I just 
want to rewatch all the movies, I currently am doing that. I discovered all these Star Wars books and I gave it a try and this book was actually freaking good. What did I rate this book? I think it was probably like a four stars. The audiobook for freaking Star Wars books are amazing. Like I thought it was just this one, but it's like all Star Wars freaking audiobooks across the board. They have sound effects. They have lightsaber sounds. Like it is a production. It sounds like you're listening to a movie. So it literally was so much fun. I will kind of explain it. If you don't know anything about Star Wars, like you literally won't know what I'm talking about. But this book was all about Qui-Gon Jinn and Obi-Wan Kenobi. So Qui-Gon Jinn was being his master and Obi-Wan Kenobi was being the little Padawan, the little apprentice. He's learning about being a Jedi. I just really enjoyed it. It was a lot of fun and seeing teenager Obi-Wan Kenobi was funny because Obi-Wan Kenobi is one of my favorite characters. I thought it was a fun adventure. Nothing like crazy amazing, but definitely worth a read. I definitely recommend the audiobook though because it really sucked you into the world. I picked this book specifically because I know she writes YA. A lot of the Star Wars authors actually are like authors that I recognize. That's like making me want to read all of them. So I actually did read another Star Wars book this month. So we'll get to that eventually. The next book that I read was An Ember in the Ashes by Sabah Tahir. I am not going to talk too much about this book because I actually have a freaking movie length long video coming for all of you. It's going to be spoiler free just so everybody can watch it. I wanted everybody to be able to enjoy the video. I'm binging the whole series. So you're going to get really in-depth thoughts very soon. Please watch the video and give it all the love. I had already read this book before two years ago. I gave it a 4.5 out of 5 stars. I really enjoyed it, but honestly, I kind of deleted my love for it. I forgot how much this book shook me to the core when I read it for the first time. So rereading it, I'm really reinvesting myself into this world, this fantasy universe, and loving the characters so much. It's definitely one of my new favorite series. The basic premise of this series is there's two characters, Laya and Elias. Laya, <coughs> Laya lives with her grandparents and her brother. Boom, her house gets raided, her grandparents killed, her brother is stolen, and he's going to be taken to a terrible prison. But she ran away. So she got away. He told her to run away. But oh my gosh, she feels so guilty for running away when her brother needed her. And even though she probably couldn't have done anything, like she has immense guilt. So she gets in contact with rebels against the nasty empire, the empire of the people that are letting people raid shit you know like they're terrible sounds like some star wars but the empire freaking sucks laia is told that her brother will be broken out of the prison if she can be a spy at this military school where all of the bad soldiers for the empire are created and she is supposed to spy on the commandant who is like the leader of the black cliff academy school and she is the worst villain i ever read about and not like saying she's a bad character like she's a good villain like she is a nasty human being and I cannot stand her literally the most disgusting person I've ever read about she has to be a spy slash slave for this woman no one has ever survived this position she always finds out the spies so she is in a horrible situation right now and she's trying to get information to tell the rebels so they will break out her brother and at this military academy she comes across this guy named Elias. He is one of the soldiers that are training to be one of the Empire's soldiers, you know. He hates his life, but, you know, he's kind of trapped. If you defy the Empire, you are dead. Like, you will literally be murdered. And he's actually the Commandant's son, and she hates him. It's such a crazy dynamic they have there, and literally all the characters, the villains, like, everything, they're all so fascinating, and you just need to pick up this series and read it for yourself. This one is just so good. Like, I got so many tabs in here. It's just a chaotic book from the start. So I definitely recommend you pick up this series like immediately. Five out of five stars. <laughs> because I read An Ember in the Ashes, I ended up picking up A Torch Against the Night as well by Sabah Tahir. This one I gave a 4.5 or a five stars. Not exactly sure about the rating. I didn't like it as much as the first one. I did read this one before. It was on audiobook and it was like a year ago and like I read the books way far in between each other so I literally forgot everything and I didn't remember this book at all. You're just gonna have to watch my vlog to really get my thoughts because I do have a lot of reasons on why I feel the way I do and you need to hear them 
okay? Keep on track with my videos so you can be ready for this movie that is deserving of an Oscar. Like I put a lot of effort into it. So subscribe and like the video or you will die tomorrow. Watch out. I will kill you. The next book I read was a Christmas book, literally like the only Christmas book I've ever read and it was a reread because I literally don't know any other Christmas books apparently. It was The Afterlife of Holly Chase by Cynthia Han. I read this before like in 2018. I wanted to reread it for Christmas and I read it in like two days, like it's super short and it was a lot of fun. I loved it even more than the first time and I gave it a five out of five stars. Like I freaking loved this. This book makes you cry and it's pretty much a Christmas Carol retelling in a modern day and it's about this girl named Holly Chase. She's a terrible person. It is all about her becoming a better person. If you know the story of the Christmas Carol, like the ghosts show up and they're like trying to tell the person to be a better person and in the end, oh my gosh, they scare them so bad that they end up being such a good person. Well, in this book, Holly Chase fails that. The ghost comes, she doesn't listen to them, she continues to be a bad person and if she does that, she dies. So she dies you know, like in the first chapter of the book. She is actually recruited to be one of the ghosts of like Christmas past or whatever to scare people in the future because there's this whole business. There's a company behind this situation that are trying to rehabilitate people every Christmas. Holly is having to do that now. This year's Scrooge that is picked out is a boy around her age He's really cute. She gets a little bit too involved in his situation and trying to rehabilitate him because she does not want him to follow in her footsteps. It is literally the most heartwarming freaking story. I love how both of the characters are so flawed and you can just see them become better people as the story goes on. Next book I read was A Reaper at the Gates by Sabat Tahir. This is the third one in the Ember in the Ashes series. Not gonna really say anything about it because you just need to watch my video like I freaking said, but I absolutely love this one. Like there's so many tabs, five out of five stars. I have a lot of feelings about it. I might like it even more than the first one. It's literally so crazy. Every book ups the stakes and like everything is insane and the characters are beautiful but they have so many flaws and I hate them so much but I also love them so much so yeah. So the final book that I read this month was Thrawn by Timothy Zahn. This is a Star Wars book and I read this because it is like about a villain kind of like the origin story of one of the villains in the Star Wars universe. He's like a general in like the military like literally it sounds so freaking boring and I gave this book a three stars so like I enjoyed it but I do feel like I've never been exposed to this character before and the other characters in this books and they are in other Star Wars things like some of the TV shows and stuff and there's other books about them and I never experienced those before so I feel like if I was already a fan of it I would have liked this one more but I still enjoyed this book for what it was. It just was a lot of the same thing over and over again. It was like a lot of like oh my gosh they accomplished something crazy Thrawn like moves up in the military. Oh my god. But I wanted to read this because Thrawn is going to be like the next big villain in Star Wars. At least like the Mandalorian is kind of making it seem like that because his name has been thrown around. I kind of just wanted to know about him. I listened to the audiobook. It was also a really good audiobook. Like all the sound effects and everything are amazing. But it's a super freaking long audiobook so it took me forever to read and I was low-key like over it. <laughs> I do want to continue because this is actually a trilogy. So I want to continue because like Darth Vader or gonna be in the trilogy you know he wasn't really in this book but he's supposed to be in the next books i love darth vader shit thank you guys so much for watching this video i really appreciate it and let me know if you read any of these books or what you read in december if you read anything at all you know let me know what's going on with you do you like these books do you hate them comment down below if you're excited for my Ember in the Ashes series vlog because dang is it long. You need to be excited because it needs to be worth it. <laughs> like this video, comment down below, have a good day, please subscribe, make sure to follow all my social medias which are linked down below and go click the bell button which is right by the subscribe button which you should have already clicked and goodbye. Mm -hmm.